Loki, the god of mischief, has his own show on Disney+, Plus. but what does he have up his sleeve? I've got a review of the first two episodes right now. Hello everybody and welcome to my review of the first two episodes of Loki, the new six episode limited series, who knows, on Disney+. Plus. Before we go any further, I want to let you know there will be no spoilers in this review. There will be nothing in this review that hasn't been released in a trailer and a synopsis and something that's been put out officially by Disney or by Disney+, Plus or Marvel. However... If you want to go into the show completely cold, not knowing anything, then just know that I really like this show. I think it is something very unique for Marvel, something that we haven't really seen before, a different corner of the Marvel Universe, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. As I've said, I don't think that anything else that I'm going to say breaches any kind of spoiler barrier, but some people want to go in knowing absolutely nothing. So from here on out, this is my non-spoiler review of Loki. Loki comes from director Kate Heron, who is a veteran of shows like Sex Education. This is her biggest project by far to date. It also comes from writer Michael Waldron. He is credited for the first episode. He's also credited as a writer on Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So take that as you will. Tom Hiddleston is back as Loki, or rather the splinter version of Loki that we saw in Avengers Endgame. The one who steals the Tesseract during all of the time travel hijinks that are going on during this movie. So we now have basically two Loki. We have the Loki that we saw die in Avengers Endgame, and now we have the Loki that escaped during all this other stuff that was going on. And if this seems like crazy, wonky, time travely stuff, well, don't worry because the show has you covered. Because very soon after Loki escapes, he runs afoul of the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, Chrono Cops, if you will, and one of those agents is Agent Mobius, played by Owen Wilson, who takes an interest in Loki and decides to try to bring him closer in to the company's operations. Gugu Mbatha-Raw has a key supporting role as Ravana Renslayer, a high-ranking judge who's also an ally of Mobius's, and shares his fascination and confusion with this version of Loki. In the same manner as WandaVision, though not in the same way, Loki is unlike anything that we've seen before in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is weird with a capital W, and it almost has to be because we've seen so many different sides of the MCU, but now we're going way back out there, and I think it's important because we've seen, as I mentioned, Loki's story already, at least the Loki that we were following. We know how it ends, and we don't want anything to devalue that story. I actually quite like his arc through the MCU, and what this movie does, instead of erasing that arc, they embrace that arc. We see how that arc plays into the character that Loki is in this show. The Loki that we see, his entire sense of self, his sense of purpose is challenged, because keep in mind the character that we meet here is at the height of his ambition. He thinks that he is destined to rule the galaxy, and when he finds out that that may not be in the cards for him, he has to reevaluate everything. He essentially has to do what his other self had years to do in a matter of minutes. Although minutes don't even really exist with the Time Variance Authority, because as you can probably tell by the name of the agency, time is very strange in this place. And the place itself is very strange. It reminds me a lot of Beetlejuice, this, this otherworldly waiting room for people that don't quite belong in any particular world. And they do a very good way of establishing this. There's a Jurassic Park style introductory animated film that gives you a lot of information and as exposition dumps go, it's a pretty good one. Exposition dumps in a show or a movie aren't always bad, it just depends on how they're done. Here they're not done lazily, it makes sense because you're gonna have people that are coming in and out of this place that don't know exactly where they are or what this place is for. So it makes sense that both Loki and the audience would need to know what's going on. Owen Wilson as Mobius is a welcome addition to the MCU fold, a breath of fresh air, and he's also both Loki's mentor and his foil. He challenges him. He really wants Loki to look inside of himself and ask himself why he is the way that he is. And, and the show deals a lot with this pain that's been inside of Loki that he has yet to deal with. The first two episodes of the show play kind of like a Men in Black meets 48 Hours meets 12 Monkeys with kind of an MCU flavor. Like I said, it's not really anything that you've seen before. We're a third of the way into the story. Critics were sent 
sent the first two episodes to screen out of six, and yet I still don't quite know where we're going. I don't quite know in what direction the story is going to go, not in a me- meandering way. As a matter of fact, both episode one and episode two end with crucial pieces of information revealed that recontextualize everything that's come before it. So it's not as if the show is spinning its wheels, but it has the luxury of time. It can take six hours to tell this story, whereas a movie version of this same thing could probably only take two or three. This really shouldn't be any surprise, but Tom Hiddleston is great as Loki. He's always been great as Loki, but this is a different version. He's able to not just make this a retread of the beats that he's hit in the past. This feels like a distinct version of Loki that is unlike any of the ones that we've seen before. There are references to Marvel characters and events that we know, but this show largely exists outside of them, so it's not reliant on them. We don't have the direct visits, at least not so far, that we saw in Avengers Endgame and that I think a lot of people thought could have been in the cards for the show, although who knows where Loki's going to go from here. This show is much more of a mystery as the TVA is trying to hunt down a mysterious person that Loki has some kind of connection with. They're trying to figure out what exactly that is, and that mystery is still being unraveled as we end episode two and going into episode three. I will say that each one of these episodes is packed with hints and background details. People are going to have a real blast picking apart different things and freeze framing, zooming in, everything that people enjoyed about the treasure hunts from previous Marvel shows, a lot of the stuff that was going on with WandaVision, people are also going to be doing with Loki. And and I'll tell you right now, I will be doing a week-by-week spoiler review of each episode of Loki starting, well, some people would say tomorrow, but really late tonight for myself and a lot of other people. So tomorrow morning, uh, more than likely, because there's a lot to go into. and A lot of people are going to have a lot of fun piecing together different parts. Like I said, there's a mystery at the core of the show, and unraveling it is going to be a key part for both its characters and the audience that's watching. This show is structured to exist in its own pocket of the universe, and how it influences and affects what we know is something that's going to be very interesting to track as the weeks go on. I think there are some hints and clues that are scattered around the first couple of episodes. We'll see if those pay off. You could perhaps intuit a little bit about where the show may be going, but I actually am having having fun not really getting ahead of the show that much. I'm enjoying the ride as I did with WandaVision by and large of taking it episode by episode and seeing where we are at the beginning, where we are at the end, and the journey from A to B. Marvel has rolled the dice once again and it's paid off so far. I think of the three main shows that we've gotten, WandaVision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Loki, Loki has gotten off to the best start as far as the first two episodes in my opinion. I felt like the first couple episodes of WandaVision were a a little little stretched out. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was a completely different structure, a completely different type of show, but I still felt like it was a little slow out of the gate. Loki really has hit the ground running. Maybe it's because it is that six episode runtime. Maybe this is the sweet spot for these Marvel shows. I'm not really sure, but I am looking forward to the rest of the show. And as I mentioned, tune in right here on the channel every week for the next six weeks. I'll be breaking down my thoughts. I don't do a lot of Easter egg videos. There's many, many other people that do that far better than I ever could, but it's it's going to be about my thoughts thoughts, my predictions, what I think could be happening. Please come back and join me for those episodes. And thank you so much for watching this review of Loki. If you want to see even more of what I'm doing, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dan Merle. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff on the channel. I just did my box office show yesterday, Charts with Dan. You can check that out. You can also see my review of In the Heights. I'll be heading to the movie theaters to see that on Thursday afternoon. That review will be right here on the channel later this week, as well as my podcast, All My Movies. That hits tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning with a spoiler-filled breakdown of Episode 1 of Loki after everybody's had a chance to watch it. But until then, stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time. Bye.